a new Power Query scenario, you can edit it in the Power BI service. This is pretty good, okay? Especially if you're on Mac or you've got big models that you need to edit. You don't have to republish them, etc. So check this out. I'll show you the settings in a second, but let me just show you the concept here. If you've got a model you've already published, and I'll also stay tuned, I'll show you how you can create one of these from scratch without desktop at all. But if you've already published something, click on the three dots, okay, and say open the data model. And look, grayed out up here, get data, transform. Okay, this is pretty cool. You go over to viewing and you go editing. And then you get this, you know, potentially quite scary message, converting your semantic model to large model format. Now I've asked around and apparently there's not really a downside to doing this. It just needs to convert it into this format. The good news about this format is that um, it keeps version history. So as you're making changes, you can always roll back, which is really essential, okay, if you stuff up. Um, used to be the case, I think, that you couldn't download a PBAX file once you'd turned it into a large semantic model format, but that's no longer the case. So all good. I wish there was a bit more of an explanation when that popped up though, I did have to ask. Okay, and now we can go to get data and add some more data into our data model, okay, in the usual ways, you know, very much like a data flow. Or we can go and edit an existing query, okay, via transform data. And if I go to table headcount here, I published this from desktop and I'd signed in on desktop to connect to a SharePoint file. So I'm going to have to go configure connection and probably put my credentials in. Okay, so create a new connection to that file. The authentication type is organizational account. I'm signed in as me, privacy level none. Okay, connect. And there we go. And actually, I've got another file, which I named virtually the same. I named it scenario two headcount. So hold on, before I change it, let's just check the numbers here. Okay, so finance, marketing, 15, 12, 19. So I made the numbers smaller in scenario two. So let me just edit this. Scenario two, save. Oh, configure connection. All right, different file. So I could potentially connect to the folder. Might be easier for this one, but. All right, let's have a look at the numbers. There we go, smaller numbers, different file, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so save. slower than desktop, okay? So I could see people getting a little bit frustrated with this. That's a tiny little four row file, but there we go, it's done. You don't have to have the time to publish and check things out again, so there we go. And if I now go back, I guess, into viewing mode, and then I could have up on another screen, and this is one of the nice things with the browser version is I could have two separate screens, one with a report, one with a model, which you can't do in desktop. Um, so I could go, let's actually try this. So here we go. I'm just going to go duplicate this tab. Okay, I'm going to go back to the YouTube, actually go to the Power Query report. Now the numbers should say five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so head count, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, and you can have your model. On a different screen. 
to your actual report, which is pretty nifty. All right, and then how do you set? How do you make sure this is working? So important for me to show you that there is a setting. So under workspace settings, under Power BI, under General, you must have this ticked. Users can edit models in the Power BI service. Okay, so that's got to be ticked to enable that. Um, and and I can still download this file. So file, download this file, copy of your report. Okay. Download still works, which is great. Okay, so that large storage format doesn't block you in any way, which is awesome. Oh, one second, I forgot to show you uh, how you restore something if you stuff up. Okay, so how do you roll back? Where's the version history? So here's my model. Okay, click on the three dots. Right down the bottom is version history. Okay. And there's, I can roll back to a previous version. Doesn't really let you see what that is. Uh, let me see what happens. Save up to five model versions. Okay. If I go restore and yes, restore. Really, I'm guessing. Okay, restore in progress. I'm guessing it takes me back to that, my higher numbers when I was pointing at scenario one file. And it... Maybe it'll allow me to switch back if that isn't the right version. So let's take a quick look. Okay, current version today. Okay, a little bit interesting, but let's see. So let's go into the Power Query report and we'll go to the head count. And if I refresh this, pretty cool. Okay. And what if you wanted to start from scratch? Do you have to publish an existing report? Well, not exactly. I wouldn't really recommend this, but if you're on a Mac and you haven't got Power BI Desktop, then I guess this is now potentially an option. So if I go back into my workspace here and I say new item and I search for semantic model, okay, new semantic model, and just go paste or manually enter data. I know, put anything you want in here, one, okay. Create semantic model. What else is under here? Oh, create a report. Okay, so just create a semantic model. While that's running, Okay, and then I'm gonna go back into my YouTube. There's that little table. So I can go here and say open data model, or while I was in there, sorry, that's really an extra step. I can go straight here, I can go open data model. I always forget that button's there. I don't use this option very often. Um, I've certainly never used it for Power Query because this is brand new. So we're here, we go viewing, editing, It'll say converting, takes a little moment. And also check out in the description, a link to my Power BI Essentials training course available now. All right. And then you can go get data and just go and add your data, build your model, build your relationships. Pretty cool. All right, so a step towards everything running in the cloud. Pretty interesting, still in preview. I think it's still rolling out around some regions, but check it out, it's probably available for you right now. Okay, hope you find it useful. Love getting your comments, like and subscribe and all that stuff. But most importantly, just tell other people about this channel, really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video.